Yo, what's happening, everybody? It's Maurice back again with another video on Marvel Champions. Your boy got his hands on Mojo Mania, and I have to say that this has been one of my favorite experiences in this game so far. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of faith in the future of Marvel Champions after playing this. I think that this hits on some tones that we'll see in the future of Marvel Champions, but... I was a little concerned at first when I first saw the announcement for this because I think Mojo was kind of an, uh, an obscure uh, villain to base the next scenario on. Um, if you watched, um, I think it was X-Men Evolution. Uh, he was one of the villains on there that had an interesting episode. But outside of that, I'm not sure how well known or popular he was. Um, they at least use Spiral um, if you play Marvel vs. Vers Capcom 2. Um, she was one of the OP <laughs> characters in that game, uh, terrorized me in that game. And then there's Magog, um, uh, once again, another obscure one. Uh, but these three villains turned out to be um, some of the best experiences I've had in this game. Um, I'll go ahead and start it off with Magog. Um, he have a super cool win condition. Uh, so the way that he plays out, um, there's a challenger's uh, environment and a champion's environment so he's the champion and you're trying to overtake him and both of the different environments are double-sided and both of them start off with uh the booing <laughs> so, so the crowd is booing and you're in like this coliseum trying to fight him to win over the favor of the crowd and the way that you get these points is by quote-unquote defeating him um i think that the 10 hit point uh per person barrier is very fair in this one um he's somebody who can deal out a lot of damage but i think having that um or well, always play two-handed so having that 20 uh hit point uh threshold for him felt right like it didn't feel like it was too short but it didn't feel like it was uh overbearingly long like he was a part of the uh mad titan shadow <laughs> campaign box but i think that his his difficulty at least on standard i think is very fair and r relatively easy but um, depending on the modular set that you play with him, uh, will determine how quickly you will get through him. Cause if there's not a lot of minions to deal with, where you can focus on him, um, it can go relatively quickly, but these modular sets that come with this, uh, with, with this villain, uh, scenario pack, um, some of them are nasty. <laughs> so you have to watch yourself, but, uh, the way that it works is you have to appease the crowd essentially to win and you have a threshold um i think there's there's 10 per per person uh threshold for either winning or losing because it's the same amount of of counters for the challengers as it is the champion so if the champion win then you lose and as the challengers if you if you win the favor of the crowd then you win and the way that you get those counters is by either defeating uh, Magog, where if you defeat him, um, you add on, I want to say it's three uh, crowd favors per person uh, just for flipping them over um, or at least de quote unquote defeating him. So when you defeat him, he goes back up to 20 hit points. Um, there's other attachments and minions that's in the game that if they come out and you get rid of them, then those give you favor. But for him to gain the the crowd's favor, all he have to do is deal damage to a character. So if he deals damages, uh, if he deals damage to you or to an ally, then he gains a favor for each instance of damage uh, that he does. So it's a balance of you know how many allies do I want to have out to give him that opportunity, or do I just want to stun, confuse, lock him so that he don't have those activations? And what I like about this particular one is that he. Um, he has this kind of give and take system within his kit where if you are surging past him, where um, if you're on the booing section and you you hit the 10, uh, the 10 count threshold to flip it over to the cheering side, then you get dealt um, uh, encounter cards. But if he's surging past you and he gets to the cheering section uh, session before you do, then um, you're able to draw a card. So it kind of helps that tempo of, you know, just not being <laughs> destroyed, hopefully, you know, extremely early. So it, it keeps that battle uh, relatively close. And whenever you uh, get to the point where you flip them and if the uh, or, or whenever you flip your challengers card and the surprise contender isn't out, 
then he comes out and he is seven per person hit points, which is almost another villain within himself <laughs> that's out there. So um, I had a lot of fun with with Magog. I think that it's simple enough to where if you are somebody who's new to the game, you've played through Rhino, Claw, Ultron, then Magog, I think, can be one of those villains that you can introduce to that new person or to yourself. Um, he's relatively simple to, to figure out. He, he has a lot of those uh, different kinds of cards that you can see within the game without it being too overwhelming. So amazing start to it. So now we go into Spiral, and I think that she's the most interesting out of the three i think she's the most unique she kind of reminds you of hella so if you've never played hella uh from the mad titan shadow box um for for hella for you to be able to do damage to her you have to go through three different minions and three different side schemes um so it's kind of like you're going on this quest to get to her and once you get to her then her help points no longer become infinite you know you can just go in on her and i feel like this one is a less overwhelming uh situation than that one because hella just takes so long to beat and i think spiral takes longer than magog for sure but i think that she had there's ways to i don't know if i want to use the word cheat but you can kind of cheat through to get to her pretty quickly because what happens is there's a you, you take three of the modular sets that come with this game um and you shuffle them into the the encounter uh deck out uh, but they each have an environment card that's uh specific to their modular set so what you do is take those uh you take those environments and put them in a separate deck and then you put in this treachery called uh corner so what you're trying to do um she has this side scheme that i think the threat level is three per person so whenever you you remove the last amount of threat on there you are able to uh, flip over the next card that's that's in that deck that you put to the side. And if Cornered shows up, then you can flip her over and you're able to do damage to her now. Because originally you can't do damage to her because essentially you're looking for her, right? And so there's this cat and mouse of trying to, you know, get her to where she's vulnerable enough to where you can attack her. And I think... I, I think that it's it's similar to Hella in the sense that, you know, you have to go through these extra steps to be able to do damage. But at least in my experience of it so far, I didn't find it overwhelming. I think that uh, she has a um, her, her the, the threat on her main scheme can kind of get out of control pretty quickly. So uh, that's something I would advise uh, maybe having a justice player, <laughs> you know, if you're playing multiple uh, multiplayer or if you're if you're able to. Um, get her cornered then just rush her down and i think the saving grace of this uh, of this particular uh villain is her uh low health count because i think that she has i want to say it's either 12 or 13 per person on her first stage and then her second stage i want to say it's 16 so she's relatively low at least on standard and then her expert i think is only 18 all right so she don't have a lot of hit points so that's what helps keeping it from feeling like this huge drag whereas with hella you got to go through all of these ridiculous amount of <laughs> of uh minions on top of her having a high health count right so i thought that this one was definitely one of the more um one of the more trickier ones because even when she's uh when she's not cornered where you can't attack her she's scheming the whole time so you're on, you're on the clock uh exponentially <laughs> trying to give you know trying to get to her so um i would advise you know bringing some confuses to the table on this one um i end up running uh through all of these villains with uh wolverine and storm so i went from leadership to justice with storm and that worked out extremely well and i'll give my review of those two um sometime soon I, i'm really enjoying those two and then we got the big bad of mojo uh this dude is wild um <laughs> so he has a uh what would you call it he has a, a a pretty high threat threshold do not let that fool you i think that it is smoke and mirrors to see that 25 per person limit so if you see that and you think it's about to be cake you've already lost <laughs> because the way that he works 
Um, you, you take three of the uh, modular sets that come with him and set them to the side. Um, and then you, you shuffle in one of them uh, at random. But whichever one you decide to shuffle in, you have to keep the uh, environment to uh, you have to put the environment in play. And then uh, whenever you reach the end of the encounter deck, you have to shuffle in another one and then reveal that um, the the environment for that one. And then it's rinse and repeat. But if you go through his encounter set twice, I mean, if you go through all of the encounter, uh, his encounter deck and there's no more decks to place into the new one then you've lost so you're kind of on the timer with him and he's rushing through that encounter deck so every, after i think it's after each villain phase um and before the hero phase you have to discard a certain amount of cards depending on his uh villain phase or villain level uh stage level that's what it's called <laughs> depending on his stage level so it's either i think three or four and for each card that's not a mojo card that you discard you have to add threat to the um to the main scheme and then he have cards where it forces you to put threat on your on your character so either you or your allies so if your allies leave play or if you flip to another form then you have to add the threat that's on your character or the characters you control onto the main scheme so it's he has multiple ways of adding threat outside of scheming, which is why that threat uh, threshold is so high. And I think that the 25 per person, at least in two player, I think is a good balance. I felt challenged enough to where I had to make the, some de uh, decisions where <laughs> I had. So on Wolverine side, I had Psylocke out there and I, I had to keep her out there for the majority of the game and couldn't use her because if I used her, then. She would have had like, I don't know, five or six threat that would have added on there. And I couldn't have that. So it, it, it forces you into uh, some it, it forces you into some pretty rough spots. But I do think that it's a fair and challenging um, set. So so far, I, I, I've really enjoyed playing through these through three villains. I think that they are some of the most fun. I wish this was almost like a big box expansion because of how well they work and how thematic that they are uh with how they play they're super fun i can easily see one or a combination of these three being added into people's um main rotation of villains to play against they don't feel um they're, they're a little easier than what we've seen in mutant genesis um you know especially coming into the box and seeing uh saber be as rough as he is and magneto being as, as hard as he is and coming into these three like I, it's not that i didn't struggle as much as i i couldn't figure out how to it, it's not that i couldn't figure out how to get past them i was able to but um not as uh, but it was done far quicker than what we experienced well what i experienced in mutant genesis so i love this set this is one of the best uh bang for your bucks in terms of uh, how much content you get for I want to say this is roughly somewhere between 18 to 20 bucks. I can't remember how much it was, but um, you get a lot of content for it. And uh, also long shot, like to have uh, the encounter card of long shot. I think I may have it right here next to me. So he's it's, it's an ally that comes in um, as and he's a he's a part of the encounter deck, just like everything else and i i just slide him right in with the standard i think that he's going to be a mainstay in a lot of people's encounter decks whenever they go up against somebody i'll say just add it right there into standard i think it's kind of nice having somebody that um he he does two thwart two attack he's got three hit points all of his attacks have piercing which is super nice he don't count against your um your ally limit and then the when he when revealed effect uh put long shot into play under your control and it gains surge and you can't cancel the um you can't cancel the win reveal effect which is which is fine i mean i think having a pretty strong ally <laughs> is worth that surge and hopefully it's not you know one of those expert twos right but i think that long shot will be a mainstay in a lot of people's uh villain decks um to come but yeah i'm super excited a lot of these uh a, a lot of these different modular sets are extremely funny to look at um i really enjoyed the sitcom one the art in it is hilarious 
Uh, the situations are hilarious and I think they're extremely thematic. Um, the, 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 the crime one is super funny. Uh, my favorites to use are probably Western sci-fi and horror. Um, I think that they add a decent amount of minions to any encounter set. Um, and I think that they can just work well on their own. Um, they're a lot like the inheritors where you can just pair them up with any villain and they just feel like their own entity coming into the game and just kind of add another uh, flavor of terribleness <laughs> that, that you have to deal with. But I highly recommend this. I think that each of these are extremely easy to pick up um, to where if you play through the core box and you understand what's going on there, I would say that these villains are along the difficulty of uh, Rise of the Red Skull where they can provide you with a challenge. They can catch you off guard a few times here and there, but they're not overly complex. Um, and also with the, to go back to the silliness of this, of this set, this gives me a lot of faith in the next uh, rotation. I'm going to assume we're going to see some X-Force characters. Uh, thanks to having Forge come into play in Storm's deck. I think he, he showed up in. Yeah, I think it was Storm's deck. Um, to, for him to have the X-Force title um, and also, or I guess the trait technically, and also his his uh, effect dealing with either X-Men or X-Force. I think we're going to see some X-Force characters and you can't have X-Force without Deadpool. And I think we have seen enough silliness in this game to confirm that I think that Deadpool will be done effectively well. I think uh, the 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 silliness from Spider Ham and the comedy from this one will definitely work in his favor. I think that um, they can find a way to make him funny, but also uh, kind of lean into his strengths as a superhero. So it'll be fun to see. I think Deadpool might end up being like an S tier character <laughs> when he comes out. But yeah, those are my thoughts on this new expansion. Let me know what y'all think if you've gotten around to it. Do you did you struggle with it maybe more than I did? Or if you thought it was too easy, just let me know in the comments. I love to hear what y'all have to say about it, because I do think that this is one of the better scenario packs that we've gotten. Um, is it better than Kang? Maybe. Like I, I, I think that it gives it a run, gives Kang a run for his money. I think that Kang um, has a lot of content to him, but I think that these three uh, villains put together as you know as one collective uh, product. I think rivals him as well as Green Goblin. Um, they've been doing extremely well with putting out some um, really good scenario packs. Same with the hood, right? Like, I just think that they've done a phenomenal job up to this point. But, uh, yeah, let me know what y'all think. Um, I'll have a uh, a video with reviewing Wolverine and Storm. I may do them together. Um, so my thoughts on them are pretty straightforward. I do enjoy them so far. Um, and I'll also be doing a series called Revisited where I go through and talk about some of the heroes that I didn't, I either skimmed over or didn't quite enjoy and just kind of give them a second chance to or maybe I call it second wind, just like the card. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking about, uh, going through some of those heroes. Um, if you've seen my, my rankings, uh, tier video, uh, there's probably about six or seven of them that I just really wasn't feeling. Um, I guess with the, with the exception of Dr. Strange, um, I mean, he just is what he is, but yeah. Uh, let me know what you think about, about, uh, Mojo. If you got your hands on it, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be more than happy to, to answer. And, uh, thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.